It's one dish. One dish. You happen to be quite the dish Nazi, I might add. When did you, everything is like, this is not clean. That's super offensive, because I come from a long line of Holocaust survivors. How could there be a long line of Holocaust survivors? I was thinking. Oh, do, do, do you, you want to? No. No, I was thinking we ordered Papa John's. Oh, OK, yeah. The yeah. sensation I get from sex and the sensation I get from eating pizza, it's like interchangeable for me at this point. These issues may seem trivial. They need to be addressed. Where do you think we go from here? I don't know. What if we turned all our fights into songs? Let's start a band. I'm a great neighbor. Hey, Dave. Hi, Dave. I was in a band myself. Oh, yeah? What was it called? The band was called Myself. It was a sort of solo percussive group. You know, rimba, uh -huh. conga, bongo, uh -huh. timbale. Let's make a list of our top 10 fights of all time. Dishes is big, obviously. Is big. That's a big one. But I think you can be a little judgmental. You being lazy. OK, you're uptight. You're distracted. Play a song. Unreal. You know, I can't relate to the lyrics at all. Right? But I loved it. This is it. Looks like the two are up. One, four. Oh, Ow. Embarrassing. That's what every husband wishes their wife would do. I spent my childhood trying to save my parents' marriage. I don't want to spend my adulthood trying to save yours. Maybe we're just two broken effects. Couples fight, what can I tell you? It's how you navigate it that makes a difference. I just want to create something. You look what? beautiful. I've never seen you two like this. Ooh. Man, I like writing songs with you. Have some ranch? Yeah. Ooh, there we go. That's a sweet bite. That's the Tom Petty bite. Yeah. She wrote, produced, and starred, and directed a movie. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh, no small feat. It's pretty yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I, it's such a dream come true. Now, I have to ask, this is kind of personal right off the bat, but your first movie that you, that you wrote that came out was with your, I think, now husband, boyfriend at the time, and it was about a couple that was about to break up, yep. and they devised a plan about how to break up. This is a couple on the cusp of, a, of, a, of multiple meltdowns or maybe breaking up, and they devise a sort of plan, sort of whether they know it or not, that'll try to keep them together. Are you I'm asking if my pattern? husband and I are breaking up? We're not yet. Yeah, actually, no, uh, I know. Uh, miraculously, it's been 13 years. We just, um, we're just obsessed with the topic. I mean, Except you know, <laughs> no, the, yeah, our first film, Breaking Upwards, was about a couple who, who kind of devises their own breakup. This is really a film about... Um, why couples choose to stay together, which is something that I've um, thought about for a long time. I'm, I'm a child of divorce, and so that question of sort of when you decide to throw in the towel and what it takes to not throw in the towel and to really um, stay in a long-term relationship and choose to stay there has always been something that's really interested me. So um, in this scenario, uh, it's music that, that brings this couple together, and, and the way in which they fight is through songs. <laughs> Well, that's the way they deal with their fighting is, is through songs. They definitely find ways to fight yes, without the song. Yes, it's the way that they, that they figure out how to navigate all of the fights that they're in is, is to actually put music to them. When did you start writing it? I started writing it, um, I guess, like two and a half years ago. So it's not, not too long ago. And then, um, and then the whole process has been kind of lightning fast. We made it a year ago in L.A., and it's coming out June 2nd. And what made you decide that this was going to be the film that you wrote and, and you directed alone? Because usually you collaborate uh, with your husband, Daryl Wayne, right? Mm -hmm. So what made you say, no, get out of here. This one's all me. <laughs> uh, I think just as an artist, it's always important to do things that scare you. And, and I hadn't directed yet. It was something that I had always thought about doing. But, um, but it felt like the next logical step since I had written and produced and starred. And, and this was something that I hadn't yet done. And... Uh, and it, it was just a story that I, I kind of wanted to, I don't know, for lack of a better word, birth on my own, <laughs> be it single parent. Um, and, 
And I hired an all-female crew on it also, which was um, also didn't allow my husband to be involved. <laughs> but that wasn't <laughs> why I hired. Um, but, but, but yeah, so it, I think it was actually important for me to also see what it felt like to be, uh, to create work with exclusively women and, and like just as an experiment. That's um, amazing. Yeah. How did you find that change the, the tone of the set? Obviously it's going to change the tone of the set, but how did, how did you find it? How did it feel for you? It was amazing. It, it actually exceeded all of my expectations. It, it was um, just a very patient and nurturing and supportive set. I think that and also highly efficient and productive. But I think that women um, are naturally kind of, are, are constantly aware of everything in their periphery in a way that um, not all men can be. I think men can be sort of more hyper-focused on one task at a time. And um, women are sort of inherent multitaskers. Um, and and I think there there's something that I had witnessed being an actress on a lot of sets where not only was there a huge underrepresentation of women on crews, but I think because they were so much in the minority, it was that much harder for women to kind of raise their own voices. Like, um, so I think I wanted to just see what it felt like if, if every woman could feel really comfortable and confident that they could be, um, in charge of, of their own creative choices and not have to sort of apologize for, for their own opinions. Um, and so that, that led to just like this really amazing collective of women creating something together. Did you find that that helped you with your character at all on set? Like at any moment where if there was a line that wasn't working, you could turn to your crew of women and be like, what's the meanest thing he can say to me right now? You know, I never asked them for um, help with the writing, but but I'll say there is quite a bit of nudity in the. I mean, not quite a bit, but there's a, a fair amount of nudity in the film and and a, a number of uh, intimate scenes, and that was a game changer for me to be surrounded by women for sure. Yeah, uh, Adam uh, wasn't like he. It, it was a the totally opposite experience because most of the time you're like the the woman on set in a sex scene who's like has to be naked and surrounded by a bunch of dudes. And this time he was the dude had to be like surrounded by a bunch of women while he was naked. Um, but that was like his fantasy. It's every other woman's nightmare. Um, so yeah, yeah, but it, it did. It, it made me feel so much freer. Was that something that you had even sort of considered before you started shooting? Were you like, you had written a couple sex scenes and were like, and then you had a female crew and you're like, oh, this will make this more comfortable. Or you sort of found yourself there on the day and we're like, oh, this is an interesting feeling now. Yeah, I don't think I even thought about it that specifically um, before it happened. I think once I was there, I was like, oh, my God, this is rad. Why don't we do this all the time? Um, Why don't, don't they do that all the time? I'd imagine it makes things, even just for that day and that moment. Yeah. I'm sure male crew members are always professional for the most part, but there's still got to be a moment where you're kind of like, you're looking at me weird. Yeah, oh, it's inevitable. I mean, I think just in in any situation, we as women are aware of our sort of objectification <laughs> you know which like the movie's about which a the movie bit is, is also about, about yeah and 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 so i think it's all the more amplified obviously when you're naked and s simulating sex like to to be surrounded by men watching you yeah you're kind of like oh god like is there gonna be a creep here um and and yeah so i think it, it is a total game changer uh so i recommend it because crews yeah. are made up of at least 40 people, and one out of 40 men has to be a creep somewhere. Yeah, I think, I'm sure that's an actual statistic. I, it might be, even be one close. in 30. I'd go one in 25. Yeah. I'd, I'd agree yeah. with that. Yeah. I mean, look, how many guys do we have yeah. here right now? One of you is probably a creep. That's for just, sure, that's just for kind sure. Of what I'm saying. A couple of you are probably creeps. You're here for free, right? Like, this is a, so there's like, a, <laughs> there's gotta be some reason. So when you decide that this movie is going to be your baby, basically, in the writing process, and you're going to produce, you're going to direct it, do you get protective and not show it as much as you normally would in, in your relationship? Or do you kind of, are you still, like, very open and collaborative about it? Uh, I think I was protective over the creative process. Once we started having cuts of the film is when I started sharing it um, more. Uh, or not like cuts of the film, but cuts of a lot of scenes where I could then get some feedback. Because you do get so kind of inside of it um, when you're wearing that many hats that it is important to have outside feedback. And of course, um, my husband and I have collaborated for so long that, that yeah, I definitely turned to him in the post process. Can I ask, I don't want to get too personal, I'll get off of this in just yeah, a second, yeah. but I find uh, the, coll the collaborative process between people who are dating or, or married to be really interesting. How did you find telling him early on, like, I don't really want you involved in this until later. How do you? How did that go? How did you guys navigate that? 
I think it was actually kind of mutual. Like we had been working together for so long. Um, and I think it can be incredibly enriching to a relationship, but also it's challenging because especially in the world of like independent filmmaking, there's not really a line that can be drawn between the, the personal and professional. It's not like you have like a nine to five. It's like you're kind of constantly talking about the work all the time. Um, and I think that that isn't like, th it's hard to draw boundaries. So I think both of us were very welcoming to the idea of, of focusing more on just the personal rather than the professional for a you bit. You to kind of come home and be like, how was your day today? Yeah, which is an today? awesome question to get to ask rather than to just come home and be like, we both had the same day. Um, <laughs> But and and the movie really deals with that too, uh, you know, in a lot of ways. It, it is about a couple who's making work together, um, and and how incredible and enriching that can be for a relationship. But also, it can be really uh, difficult. The songs are are wonderful in the Thanks. film, and I know that you, uh, the three of you, uh, Adam and Fred Armisen, have been performing as a band together a few yeah. times. Uh, who wrote the songs? I wrote all the lyrics. Wow. Um, and then I co-wrote the music with a friend of mine named Kyle Forrester, who I'd collaborated with before in the past. And, um, and yeah, th and then Adam and Fred and I started rehearsing before the film because we actually played all of the music in the film live. You know, a lot of the times when you see um, music in movies, it's they're singing to playback uh, because it's just easier for production. But for me, it was really important to actually be able to... Um, capture the authenticity of, of live performance and sort of all of its imperfections. So we had a lot of band practice before. Fred didn't need that much band practice because he's like a legitimate really drummer. drummer. Yeah, yeah. Um, Adam and I did though. So, um, but that was really fun because it kind of enhanced our like intimacy in this different way that I've never experienced before as an actor, you know, because... So that's you singing live at the, yeah, the final, in, the, in one of the last scenes of the, in the, the movie there, yeah. just you alone? That's yeah. really beautiful. Oh, thanks, yeah, thanks. it's a really great song and beautiful voice. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, yeah it was really fun, and it was, um, it's been really fun to then take it on the road, and now I've been performing, we've now performed three times live in front of uh, real, real audiences, not just our easier. crew. It's getting easier, yeah. We first performed, we premiered at Sundance, and, uh, and we first performed at our after party there, and then it was just, like, the most terrifying thing I've ever done. And now every time we do it, it's a little more fun, um, and I can kind of lean into it a little more. But I, I didn't play, I play bass in the movie, and I didn't play it until uh, I had to learn it for this film. So What's the easiest instrument to play? Yeah. I don't know if that's true. No, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I I, he says something like that in the movie. He says nobody nobody grows up wanting to play bass. They just, like, end up playing bass. But um, Flea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of bassists that would take uh, a bridge with that. But, um, but yeah, so, so that's the scariest thing about performing live, I think, is, like, the new instrument. No, there's a uh, there's definitely a quality to the art, the fights between you and Adam, and a lot of just the conversations. There's a lot of overlap, and I'm wondering how much of that was written, how much of that was you guys finding it in rehearsal, and then sort of rewriting to the jokes that you sort of improvised. Because he's a very well known improviser, and very funny when he does it. Yeah, yeah. I actually just went and saw him at uh, Upright Citizens Brigade last night. It was really fun. Um, the script, uh, we we stuck to the script for the most part. I mean, I I feel like. Um, the script is so important to a film, and and it always scares me to stray from it too much, even when it's in the hands of like brilliant improvisers. But it was also important that I gave, especially Fred and Adam, the room to feel that they could if they wanted to. And so I would say it's like, you know, eighty five percent scripted or ninety percent scripted, and then there are little things here and there that that they added, but. It was a very um, relaxed vibe on set. I think what was really important to me was that this relationship felt really grounded and authentic. And, um, and so we had two cameras running at all times so that you know, we would never have to feel like we had to fi like find a moment and repeat it, that it could all feel really lived in and organic. And, and, um, and obviously, if any actor felt like something in the dialogue didn't feel like something they would say, that was a, a discussion. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was scripted for the most part. Now, it's inevitable when you're writing a, a movie and directing a movie about a relationship that things from your personal life go into the movie because you're writing and generally you steal from whatever you know or what's going on and what you've observed. How do I you... I like use the word steal. Is that okay? <laughs> steal from what you know. Yeah, borrow. Isn't that kind of what writers do? Uh, steal? Yeah. yeah. From other people's <laughs> ideas or anything, but you steal from your life. Writers are all thieves. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think it's impossible not to to incorporate things from your own personal experience as a writer, even when you're writing characters that are, are somewhat far from from oneself. I mean, you know, 
I am a, an artist and in a long-term relationship. So obviously there are a lot of similarities between um, me and my character. But uh, but it was also it's also important, I think, for me as a writer to enter worlds that are different from my own. So it's it's a mixed bag. Did you find that uh, this is your debut as a director, but you were a producer on a few movies before uh, and a writer on it? Did you find that that sort of helped you navigate a lot of the sort of first time director hurdles that maybe you've seen other directors have or you would worry about having? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think being a director is so much about also having a, um, an eye towards being a producer and, and the writing is so integral and in how you direct your actors and how you tell a story. And then as an actor, obviously, I've had a lot of experience with directors um, being directed by them. And so I think that was also uh, hugely helpful to kind of see what works and what doesn't what's in the that worst, communication process. What's the worst direction you've ever gotten from a director? Um, don't do that. Really? <laughs> yeah, like, I think that the trick in talking to actors as a director is that you never want to make them feel self-conscious, right? Like, you never want them to be in their heads because when you get a beautiful performance, it's because they're actually living in the moment. Right. Um, and living in the moment and acting in the moment is like the holy grail. I mean, it's a hard thing to do. So you never want to interfere with one's ability to get there. And I think if you say to someone like, don't do that, then the next take, all they're going to be thinking about is what they did rather than giving them something that's active or or that might provoke a, a question um, that then would just allow them to play a little bit more yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And don't do that isn't necessarily in reference to like don't pick that up or don't touch that, but like don't do that emotional thing that you probably found doing yeah. those lines because that's where they naturally went. Yeah, I think it's always uh, important to sort of give something that's active rather than make someone think about something not to do. So was this a set, like a, would you say that Never is directing a movie an easy process, but would you say that it was kind of an easier process than usual because you've had so much experience as a writer and a producer and an actress? Yeah, I think that definitely helped um, helped me a lot. And I also had an amazing crew and team around me and, and directing is very much um, a collaborative effort. You know, you have your DP and amazing producers and, and all of your department heads who are not only helping you see your vision through, but are enhancing it with their own, own visions. So, um, did you lean on anybody for your performance? I mean, look who was looking into the monitor considering you're in virtually every frame of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. My producer, Natalia Anderson was at the monitor for me. Cause when you are directing a film that you're also acting in, it's, it's essential that you have some eyes on the monitor. And we spent, um, a long time before we were in production, just like really going over exactly what I wanted for every frame. Because I wanted to, yeah, because I just, I knew that I didn't want want to have to run back to monitor all the time. I like to stay in the scene as much as I can. So it was really important for me to know that I could trust the person uh, who had eyes on the monitor to really be um, making sure that what I wanted was was being achieved, and she did, and she, she's an awesome uh, producer. Did you ever have a moment where you were like, I think I got it, nailed it, and she was kind of like, no, you got to go again? Um, not that I can remember. No, I mean, I think it was like, I, I don't love a lot of takes as, as a director. I also don't love a lot of takes as an actor. I, I think if you're, if you're kind of feeling the vibes with, with your cast, it's better to just keep it fresh and, and move on if you've gotten it. I mean, there's one scene in the film um, that we shot all in one take. It's a seven-minute scene. It's, it's kind of the climax of the film. It's a really big fight. And, um, and that was probably the toughest scene to shoot because it, it required so much choreography um, and and also so much emotional digging as an actor. Um, yeah, he throws an insult at you in that scene that is like, those are divorce words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not saying that's where this movie goes or anything that doesn't give anything, but those when I heard that line, I was like, divorce... That's yeah, I mean, well, that no was one like gets past that. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I mean, I think that that couples fight dirty a lot of the times, and it's and you don't really get to see it on screen. Like, I feel like you always see kind of like a little bit of a whitewashed version. But I think like what I was really interested in doing was really like seeing how couples actually fight and 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 doing that so that I think 
uh, viewers could feel like the, it, they, it wasn't just them. Because I think the more that I spoke to so many of my friends in long-term relationships, we were all kind of fighting about the same things. Uh, and when you're in a relationship, it, it always feels like, oh, this is just like our thing. But it, there's comfort in knowing that it's, it's more universal. And no one talks about, which I think this film gets really well, and it goes to, with what you're saying about couples fighting dirty, is the one-upsmanship that goes with couples fighting. And it's like you look for the things that happened before that you can dig in a little bit. Yeah. That kind of stuff, which they're good very at good at in doing. My life. Uh, yeah, and in wanting to win. You're good at that? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, uh, you know, it's like that's the thing is like that that so so many fights end up just being fights about the fight. It's like, yeah, but you just said that, oh, yeah. you know, and then you're just in this awful spiral. Um and and I, I, I didn't mean that. Yeah. Why did you say it? <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean it overall. I meant like right now you're doing it. Yeah. And then there's the thing overall. of the always like you always do this, which is a major trigger because then it's like the kitchen sink and then it's like a character assassination. I mean, there's well, so many. You, things. I always do it. Then why are you here? Like, exactly. Yeah. Are we getting into a fight right We're now? We're doing it right now. Whoa. This is getting real. AOL. <laughs> I basically I've been there. I know what we're divorced? talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, this interview can. is over. <laughs> uh, well, let's get some questions actually uh, from the audience. Who do we have that has a question? Right there. Hi. Uh, so I know that you do a lot of film and television. What differences in those production processes are like your favorite? Um, well, I guess uh, what's nice about the TV show I'm on right now, Life in Pieces, is that it's single camera and we it's shot in four separate store like. Uh, there's four separate stories told every week, so it actually is the closest thing to f- to a film like experience that I've had on television so far. Um, I came from the world of multi camera sitcoms, which is much more like doing theater. But um, I think the thing about a film is is especially as a filmmaker in that process, not just kind of showing up as an actor, is is um, just watching this thing grow from inception to sharing it with the world is a really special and beautiful thing. And it's something that you can live with for a longer amount of time, like the, the um, editing process and, and kind of the, if you're making an independent film, the festival process and the distribution process um, is something that you kind of can, can cherish and savor a little more. TV is much faster in terms of output. You have this wonderful monologue in the film by Susie Essman, um, who essentially gives a, a, a detailing of how women are and how they feel and what she's learned about women and men over the course of her life. And uh, during that monologue, we see multiple images of you getting dressed and looking at yourself in the mirror. You're obviously thinking about how you look. And I thought it was really a, a wonderful monologue and really beautiful to sort of uh, put those p- images of you over that. Can you talk about wanting to see a movie that said everything that you may feel about being a woman or everything that you feel about being a woman that men don't understand about women? Because it, it is such a cliche to be like, men don't get women. And to find truth in that still is, is really hard, and you do it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, I think a big part of this film for me was distilling the differences between men and women in order to potentially like help bridge them because I think so often like men and women in relationships um, are just trying to like make each other the same but we're just inherently really different species um, and I think acknowledging that is really helpful in in trying to build relationships and live together and and uh, and and overcome the sort of battles that do seem to always fall along those those gendered lines. Um, so yeah, I mean, I hadn't yet seen that, and it was something that I was craving to see uh, to see kind of distilled very specifically. Um, and and Susie, who plays Adam's mom, is is a therapist in the film, so I thought she was a perfect character to kind of do it. <laughs> And it's kind of your your punchline for for your character. Did you find a when did you come up with that as the punchline, or were you always sort of writing towards it, or did you find that sort of in the middle of the process? I didn't outline this film. I mean, the screenwriting process for me, my intention was just to have the most fun as I possibly could, which is kind of where the music came from. I knew that I would have fun writing music, and and um, so I started with writing some of the songs, but. It was really fun because I had no idea where the script was going as I was writing it. So that wasn't my intention from the start. It just kind of um, unfolded. So you sort of realized about three quarters of the way in the movie that you had been saying this thing. <laughs> and it was yeah. time to like... 
to, I hadn't or, even been saying it. I hadn't unpacked it myself. Like I, it was, it was actually an exciting moment for me as a human also um, to just be like, oh, maybe that's what it is. Like every time there's that 30 second delay when a woman asks a man something and we're all like, what's happening? You know, <laughs> um, that maybe like we can try and un tr understand that so that we're not snapping at them and, <laughs> and then we get to play the nag. And it's all these like sort of archetypal um, gender roles that we can so easily fall into that I was trying to subvert as best I could. Absolutely. Next question. Uh, hey, Zoe. Uh, Hi. I know, so you had a couple of performances uh, this past weekend in mm -hmm. Brooklyn. Um, uh, had you ever wanted to, like, be in a band when growing up? And uh, would you, do you want to, do you plan to continue, like, performing, like, maybe doing more songs or writing more songs and performing? Yeah, I loved Jem and the Holograms um, growing up, so I guess that was my first inspiration. Um, I've always, yeah, I think I always liked the idea of being in a band, but it was never like something that I was like, I want to be that. Like, I think, uh, I think it just kind of happened I, when I was in high school. My my mom teaches. Um, video art at Rutgers University, and so she had these grad students who were all these, like, cool rocker boys, and they started a band, and they asked me to be in it when I was in high school. So that was my first uh, real experience as a, as a musician. So I was a singer in that band, and that kind of um, continued through college. And, uh, and it was really fun. I, ha I had a lot of fun performing, so I think I got the bug there. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and then, um, and then because I've always liked writing lyrics, it kind of organically evolved that I would start to write my own stuff and uh, and yes we do want to keep performing and we have an album that is actually coming out our band in the movie is called The Dirty Dishes uh, so the the album is coming out June 2nd um, so definitely check it out <laughs> that's awesome congratulations on that thank you I think we have time for one more question hi um, I heard you, since you did like your whole crew was just all women would you ever do that again yeah. No. No. no, <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I, I. I. We just shot a music video for the Dirty Dishes first single, and I. I hired all women for that as well. It, it's. Um. It's really a spectacular experience. I have to say. It, it's. It's incredible, and one of the most gratifying things about um, doing that was that Adam, who was oftentimes the only man on set, um, and is a producer in his own right was saying that now he wants to only hire all women crews because it really was uh, special, you know? It's a really cool thing. Um, I think especially because women in, in this industry don't have as many opportunities, um, there's such an amazing um, hunger to perform in a way that I think that... Um, be, men who, who, whose opportunities come to them much more easily might not have. So it's, it's not even just like kindness and graciousness and patience, but it's this work ethic that is, that is really unbelievable. There's an entitlement that comes along with being a man. Yeah. Sorry, there is. <laughs> Sorry guys. But can you imagine if you answered that question with no? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, they were awful. It was no, a bummer. Was, yeah, yeah, women are a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Zoe, uh, congratulations on the Thank movie. Thank you so I love much. It. It's so great. Your directorial debut, and it's wonderful. Thank Band Aid, you. when does it come out? When can people see it? It comes out June 2nd. Tell all your friends. You can follow at Band Aid Film on Twitter and Instagram. That's when the album comes out as well. Album is also dropping June 2nd, yeah. Zoe Lester Jones, everybody. Thank you Zoe so Lester. much. Thank you.